So back in January, my boyfriend and I set off on quite the adventure. We hit up San Francisco, LA and Orlando before moving on to Europe where we visited Paris, Amsterdam and London and then finished things off in Japan staying in Tokyo and Osaka. We were away for an entire month and as you probably guessed, I accumulated quite a number of things. So today I welcome you to my try on haul. First of all, I obviously want to address the elephant in the room because it's kind of odd timing to be doing a round the world trip haul. But yeah, we are so insanely lucky and grateful that our dates for our trip just managed to work out before everything got crazy. But the point of today is just to have a lighthearted distraction, aka me just playing dress up. So hope you enjoy. Honestly, my brain isn't really cooperating with me today, so we're not gonna try and go in any particular order. Everything is spread out across the floor and we're just gonna dive in. I'm starting with this because I've already had a few questions about it in my previous video. It is from the store Gallery in Tokyo. It's just a nice casual cozy vibe, but the style of the graphic gives it a more street style sort of element and then the amount of bright colors just makes it very me. Also works well for those of us trying to push that Hobie core agenda, which you know I am all about. Actually, a really good one to go along with it is this clear bag I picked up from WeGo. Originally, I got it for like a BTS inspired concert outfit ideas. <laughs> that would have been a really shitty title, but I think I'm going to postpone that for now. But I still think this was a good little pickup. Even the little bits and bobs inside I got while I was in Japan as well, including this Takashi Murakami badge, which was like top of my list of things to purchase while I was over there. So I was stoked to find it. Clearly was feeling the see-through bag trend because I picked up this one from X-Girl as well. And this one is actually so beautiful. I use it as a room decor piece too. I thrifted a couple of simple summer dresses when I was in London, actually, ironically, because I was freezing my ass off while we were there. But this one I loved because it has that really vintage 90s silhouette to it, as well as the floral print is very of that time. This is the sort of thing I would just live in. I've already worn it a few times since being home and I actually want to do some more outfit repeater type videos. So prepare to see this styled a bunch more ways. Sticking to the same store but switching the decade up because this is more of a 60s moment with this bright green dress. When I first saw it, I instantly envisioned it with a white turtleneck underneath, teamed up with some go-go boots, and then later on in the same store, I also came across this silk scarf and the color combination was just perfect, so I was sold. At first I was kind of disappointed it wasn't shorter just so it had that real 60s mod style that is but honestly this is much more realistic for everyday wear like I feel comfortable bending over I know I'm not going to show the entirety of my ass which is refreshing honestly. Oh okay another item I thrifted but this time from Amsterdam which by the way I feel like their vintage prices were a lot more reasonable than the rest of Europe but we only spent two nights there so didn't get a chance to really do some damage. This was the only piece I actually picked up in the end. It's this pair of Yamaha Okay, I've literally pinned that in like the worst way possible. It's this pair of Yamaha overalls. And when I tried them on in store, I wasn't too sure because it is a lot more fitted than I personally would usually opt for. But something about it was kind of reminding me of that one scene in like the early 2000s Charlie's Angels movies where they're at the racetrack. I don't really know how to describe it. If you know, you know, but this is like the less sexy version of that. I have a feeling I'll get more wear out of these when I return to a more natural hair color though. Same thing probably applies for this jersey I picked up when I was in Paris. I think this is sick and I actually wore it when I was in Tokyo and it was one of my favorite outfits of the entire trip. Obviously the hair clashes with it just a tad now. You don't, you don't need to bring it up in the comments, that's okay. <laughs> but I really love the fit on this. It's the perfect amount of oversized without me just looking like I'm swimming in it. And in that outfit pic I was talking about, I also styled it with another piece from Paris, which was this utility vest. You guys know I, I live for vests. This one I thought was sick. This is the sort of thing, again, that is just like the perfect outfit topper. I will be layering over the top of just about any street style look. Another piece that falls into that street style category, and you guys have already seen it on Instagram, is this windbreaker jacket. I actually got this from, I always forget if it's TK Maxx or TJ Maxx, 
whichever one they call it when you are in London, but this was the last one, the only one there in any of the sizes, and I spotted it in the men's section and was like, Sam, you should get this. So technically it's his, but um, we both wore the exact same outfit while we were away. I just think the color combination is sick. I will admit you low-key look like a jockey, but I don't know, something about it just works. I got this little pair of shorts from Style Nanda, and the store they have in Tokyo is quite small compared to the ones in Korea, obviously. It mostly focuses on the 3CE makeup line, but they have a few clothing options on the top floor, and I just could not leave without this. I don't know if you guys have actually ever noticed, but it's not very often that I wear a pair of shorts just don't really feel comfortable in them for some reason but these ones were so cute that i thought they would be worth trying to push outside my comfort zone i just really admire the stylist team for style nanda because i don't know there's something about it that you instantly know that's a style nanda model even if the pieces are more simple that's just something they do when they pair it all together so i don't know if i'm the only one obsessed with it if you guys are too let me know because i'm looking for an excuse to do like a dedicated video on style nanda inspired looks i got a pair of jeans from x girl which by the way is probably my favorite brand ever like i just i love it in there i walk in i would happily wear every single item they have in store all the staff are just dressed immaculately and have such a cool energy like I don't know, it feels like home in that store. I love it. And I was suckered into buying this pair of pants, even though they're not wide-legged. Like, what is this? This is very uncharacteristic of me, but the all-over pattern really drew me in. There's just something about them that just makes you feel cool. I don't know. I'm not usually the sort of person to feel cool, but these, these do it for me. Also from X Girl, I picked up this maxi length slip dress. I love the plaid and this bleach splatter combination. I feel like that is like the next evolution of the tie dye trend at the moment. So I was really feeling the 90s fantasy. This is definitely the sort of piece I can see not being everyone's cup of tea. Honestly, even when I picked it up, my boyfriend was like, uh, you sure you really like that one? But yes. I do. I thought I'd just throw on this cute little beret that I thrifted when I was in Osaka and it was around the same time that NCT 127 were dropping those little mini videos on Instagram and it totally reminded me of some of the berets they were wearing in the boom video. So I had to cop even though my head is kind of too big for it. The last thing I picked up from X Girl was just this plain baby blue long sleeve with the simple graphic in the front, which is just serving you sugar and spice and everything nice. I forgot to include this skirt before, but I did actually pick it up when I was in LA and now teaming the two together, I kind of feel like I look like Blossom dressed up as Bubbles. I should have actually mentioned this earlier, but I'm sorry I don't remember any exact prices on anything. Honestly, my brain was just frying trying to do the currency conversion every time I went to buy something. Plus, most of it's been worn and washed, the tags and receipts are long gone by now. But um, this item I know would have been my most expensive and you guys are going to be like, it is this vintage WWF baseball style jersey, which is obviously merch for The Rock, AKA The Great One. I picked this guy up in LA from round two and they had an entire rack of vintage wrestling merch and my eyes just lit up, man. Like I was in my element growing up, wrestling and fashion were my two obsessions, which really kind of made me the weirdo at school because what sort of combination is that? I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I mean, I still am a weirdo. I've just added a couple of extra interests to the list, but this holds great nostalgia in my heart. The Rock was like my first love, my first crush. I liked him before he went Hollywood, before it was cool. So I had to pick this up, even though my bank account is honestly still crying. So just after my explanation of how all over the place my interests are, I'm really just proving my point by now featuring this floral grandma moment. This was another thrift find when I was in Japan and instantly my mind just went to Hyuna's Instagram. I'm like, this is exactly the sort of thing she would rock in her grandma chic sort of way. And I really, really wanted to have a go at it myself. And I fell in love with the color combination. I low key kind of feel like a kid in the eighties who's just played dress up in their mom's wardrobe, but um, I'm still kind of here for it too. <laughs> okay, here's yet another floral dress. 
I thought I'd try and spice up the try on a little bit this time around with some darker accessories to add a bit of edge as opposed to the previously very feminine look. This is such a sweet little top I picked up from Urban Outfitters. You guys know I just love this shade of green and I did actually wear this when I was over there when we went to the Studio Ghibli Museum which was so so fun. You can't actually take any footage when you're inside but it was beautiful. Oh, also I want to give a quick shout out to Monica because she recently did this really cool video where she matched star signs to a Studio Ghibli or Ghibli. I never knew how to pronounce it and I've been to the museum. But anyway, definitely check it out, especially if you haven't actually watched any before and you don't know where to start. This shirt is definitely more on the sheer side. I think last time I styled it with like a green turtleneck underneath. A lacy bralette would look really cute for the spring or summer, but I was just lazy and threw it on with this ruche shirt and now I kind of feel like I'm having a Lizzie McGuire moment. Like for some reason in the early 2000s, I feel like all people did was wear two shots constantly. Okay, I'm pretty sure we've actually made it to the last item. <laughs> it actually doesn't look like much on the hanger. This is definitely one you need to see on, but is this, um, I don't even really know what to call it. In Japan, a lot of the stores already do the thrift flipping for you, if you will, so this is one of the results of that. I originally saw it on a mannequin and thought it looked really cool. And then when I saw it just on the hanger, I wasn't too sure, but my lazy ass actually decided to try it on and ended up purchasing. I think teamed with a little plaid skirt, it would definitely be the sort of look I would style like an Ipsy member in. But yeah, that was pretty much everything I collected while I was away. There's a few other items that I've got saved away for particular videos, plus like all the K-pop albums and anime figurines, but for the most part, I think I remembered everything. I'd love to know what items you thought were the standout pieces from my trip though. So hit me up in the comments or come on over, join the family on Instagram at still the spotlight. But yeah, that's enough blabbering on. Hopefully I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.